So if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I get really excited about new and interesting chips that are coming down the pipe. Now, it's been a while since I last reported on what Fujitsu's got in the pipe. Fujitsu is a company that likes to design really interesting, really specific chips, but then also talk about them a lot. And that's part of the reason why um, you know, they've integrated into universities with some of their chips as well. Their last big thing was A64FX. This is a custom ARM-based uh, processor using scalable vector instructions for high-performance compute. And this went into, the, at the time, the number one uh, supercomputer in the world. The idea to do lots of vector oper operations like a GPU, but in a CPU context with ARM cores. Um, since then, you know, we had a lot of A64FX go on. I actually got access to a system at one point um, due to Fujitsu. Uh, I had to sign a document that said you will not use access to this system to develop nuclear weapons, and I went tick. But what's coming next from Fujitsu is equally as exciting as what A64FX was back in the day. And I've reported on this before a little bit. You may have seen a little short I did uh, back at Supercomputing, was it last year or even the year before, about a chip called Monarca. Now, Monarca isn't a true successor to A64FX. It's going after a slightly different market, but it got me excited because when I saw it at the time, it was the first mention of anything, any chip ever being on two nanometer. So be able to, to be able to state so far out that yes, we are designing a chip that's based on two nanometer was actually really exciting to me. And we got some other indication of what this chip is gonna be. Um, I think around 288 cores, we'll go through the slides in a bit based on ARM v9, uh, and it's gonna have uh, stacked SRAM, compute dies, SRAM dies, and, and all of that. And essentially since then, we've been in a holding pattern waiting to hear more. Given the fact that it's based in two nanometer and we don't have two nanometer in high volume production, at any fab right now, it's gonna be a waiting game to see you know, who catches up first and who's gonna be lead supplier and eventually where Fujitsu fit in. However, at Mobile World Congress this year, uh, 2025, Fujitsu had their typical display because, of course, Fujitsu does everything, so of course they're going to be at Mobile World Congress. But I somehow bumped into the fact that they had a presentation about Monarca there. And I was like, ooh, this sounds interesting. And then I looked, and then there was actually what looked like a die, looked like a chip of Monarca. Um, whether it is or not, it may be a mock-up. However, alongside it came a bunch of you know, new information that we hadn't heard before, or at least validation of rumor that we had heard before. And then also this integration that we've got with AMD, which I'm gonna go through with you now. So I'm gonna go through what I saw at the booth. And what we're seeing here is you know, the chip, just high level specifications here, 144 cores um, per chip, and we're gonna have two sockets per system, so 288 cores per node, 12 DDR5 channels, PCI Express 6, super low voltage, whatever that means, um, and then ARM v9 using scalable vector extensions too, and then confidential computing as well. This is how the chips, uh, this slide is gonna show you how the chips put together. So we've got core dies on two nanometers. They're gonna be stacked on SRAM dies based, at, based on five nanometers, then a central IO die on five nanometers with a silicon interposer. Uh, two nanometer for efficiency, five nanometer SRAM, um, for, and they, that's gonna be using uh, three silicon vias to make it go through. It looks very much like a second generation AMD V cache with the compute on top. But the interesting picture here is this is what it might look like in a system, though this is only got eight memory channels when it's obviously gonna have 12, so they've repurposed something that looks like a, an Intel CPU here. They're stating you know, 2x the high performance, 2x the efficiency, easy to use. Fujitsu is actually really focused on compiler technology, and they have some pretty unique compilers for their chips, so and this is gonna have one of those as well. They've built this also you know, for reliability, so it says multiple virtual machines, again, this confidential computing, and then all the standard service features like uh, RAS, but they're calling it a mainframe class chip. Mainframe typically means high availability, which I'm at 99.999999%, which is what IBM rates its mainframe processors at the Z line. That means downtime of about three tenths of a second per year. Thing is, that's a system architecture discussion more than a chip discussion. But uh, we can get we can get into that as we know more as we learn more about the chip. But what's interesting here is is I'll go to this uh, this picture here. So I managed to get a close in of what the package looked like, and we can clearly see you know the four compute die around the edge, the big I/O die in the middle, and what looks like four stiffener dies. 
um, you know, at 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 the uh, at the axes. They, this is very much probably going to be a mock up because I don't un I don't understand where they're going to get the two nanometer from today, unless they are working really really closely with a specific partner. And that given where base wear for Jitsu are, Japan does have a two nanometer fab that's currently being built by a new company called Rapidus, where it's more like a conglomerate of other Japanese companies. That, that uh, fab there is to reintroduce Japan uh, as a hub for leaning edge uh, manufacturing. There's going to be some two nanometer chips there. They're partnered with Tens Torrent. They've partnered with research institutions. I wouldn't put it past it for Jitsu, that Fujitsu is part of that play as well, at least as, you know, as a customer at this level. So that's fairly interesting. This is the announcement that they had with AMD. I think this may have been a few months prior. But you might think, well, why is AMD, who has their own CPU, their own AI chip, why are they getting involved with Fujitsu? And it turns out Fujitsu is going to leverage AMD's expertise in software. Now, before you laugh, Fujitsu seems to think it's quite good, and so does AMD. The whole point here is porting a good chunk of Rockham to work, what well, Rockham, which is AMD's uh, enterprise software stack, onto ARM-based processors. So it may be executing um, you know, compute through the ARM processor, or it may be just be for control, and you have AMD processors being the compute behind the CPU. We're unsure here, but the whole point is to integrate a AI and HPC software stack through Rockham onto this new Fujitsu Monarca CPU. Uh, the idea being that why recreate the wheel when you can partner with companies who have already built a few spokes. This is the presentation which is essentially everything of what the, the chip's going to be. And these, this is a slide we saw before. So on the left you have the A64FX which is you know this high performance processor that became number one supercomputer in the world. It was 48 cores a socket. Um, it used a 7 nanometer CPU with HBM, four channels of HBM2, PCIe3, and, the, and an interconnect, and it was air cooled and water cooled. Monaco, by, uh, on the other hand, will be air cooled only. Uh, they've gone down from HBM to DDR, which kind of showcases it's more of a scale out uh, solution. 2 nanometer, 5 nanometer, which we said before, ultra low voltage, and 144 cores per chip, two sockets per system. Um, giving that 288 cores. We don't know yet if it's got um, threading or not, so that might be a, an, another indication. The, this is their slide about ultra-low voltage technology. Uh, they're using custom circuits, including custom SRAM cells, using their own proprietary development tools, which enable stable operation at an ultra-low voltage. Sounds like even beyond the voltage of what the fabs are, have enabled in their PDK, in their process node development kit. Uh, so this is the sort of thing Fujitsu does right. They optimize to the hilt with something very specific that there's something really good at. With the A64FX, it was that uh, scalable vector extension engine and the compilers underneath, and it worked really well for that context. In this case, it also comes down to how they're doing the physical design as well. So that's really interesting. I hope they come to hot chips, for example, with some explanation about what's exactly happening here. For those of you who are interested in history, this slide is actually pretty impressive. It's about how uh, Fujitsu processors have developed over the years, and it's showing the lines of uh, the mainframe processors, uh, the Spark line of processors, if you remember those, and then the eventually the coalescence of A64FX, basically bringing all three of those processor lines you see here into one single chip, and going forward again, it'll you know coalesce everything into one single chip. Um, they haven't announced you know, what sort of supercomputer Monarca will go into or whether it's going to be distributed. They have said it's in a slight, yeah, like I said it, at right at the beginning, it's a slightly different bracket to where A64 effects were targeted. I did ask about AI, and they said AI is a focus, but it's not like the be-all and end-all. They still recognize HPC as a, as a key part in that. But it, uh, they do acknowledge that 2 nanometer is really expensive, and that's one of the reasons why they have to move to chiplets. Um, that's the only way you're going to get a value out of a processor that you're going to be making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, and then deploying it in data centers all around Japan, all around Asia, and perhaps uh, elsewhere in the world. Fujitsu does do some external sales of these custom chips, not as much as you know back in the Spark days, but one of the reasons we got access to A64FX and pretty much the only command I was able to run that I thought of running was LSCPU 
is because um, they had a system that you could arguably go buy if you had enough money. So that's Fujitsu Monarca as we understand it today. Like I said, I'm really hoping that they get onto either hot chips this year or next year, start talking about their design, start talking about their packaging. I'm keeping an eye out for them at the IEEE conferences in case they've got something to present. Uh, that's always exciting. And if anybody from this team is watching and wants to reach out and you know, build a uh, communication pathway to talk about this stuff, please do let me know. My email address is pretty much everywhere. You can just Google it and find it. But thank you all for watching. If you have comments on this, please do them, leave them down uh, below the description because I want to see how interested you guys are about you know, just chips like this. Stuff that you'll probably ne never get to play with, stuff that I'll probably never get to play with. But if we can at least see it in person and go, oh, that's really cool, that's what I'm here for.